Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 to 30. Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 to 30. Every week at First Baptist Church, we engage in a celebration of Jesus Christ. We celebrate and worship Him because He is King of kings and Lord of lords. He is our Savior and the Savior of everyone in this city. We are celebrating Jesus right now as we learn about His life and ministry through the account of one of his servants, the Apostle Matthew. And in Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 to 30, in words that he wrote a couple of thousand years ago, give us comfort that we need more than anything else right here in 2020. Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 to 30, this is what God says. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you've hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for this was well-pleasing in your sight. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I want to pray for weary and heavy laden people in this room. I want to pray that whoever they are and whatever's going on, that you would make their burden light, that you would give them rest today. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. I want to speak to people this morning who are weary and heavy laden. I want to talk to you this morning if you are tired, you need a break. That is who Jesus is speaking to in this passage, and that's who I want to speak to this morning. I want to talk to people who want to know the rest of what it means of finding a true and a lasting home. It reminds me, this text does, of a time years ago when I was serving as a seminary professor and I was coming through my neighborhood late one night. It was Christmas time and cold and I came around the corner and for the first time in three weeks, I saw the lights of my house shining through the darkness. That was then and remains now the longest time I've ever been away from home. I had traveled to the other side of the world to visit a country where it is illegal to preach and believe the gospel. I had gone there because in this location, in this part of the world, uh, pastors, everything they do is illegal. And so getting training is very hard for them to do. And I was partnering with a ministry who sought to send professors over to that part of the world to give pastors theological and ministerial training. And so I was over there and for uh, two straight weeks, I taught all day through an interpreter trying to equip 40 or so men from all over the region to go back and pastor more effectively. They were long, hard days. It was cold. I had to teach in uh, multiple layers in a coat, and I got a heads up, and so I got those hand warmers, you know, that you get when you're hunting, and I would crack those open and 
keep my hands in my pockets to stay warm while I'd walk around teaching all day. Uh, I did the best I could to adjust to the food in that part of the world, but uh, not so successfully. I didn't sleep well most nights because, again, the work was illegal in this country, and so I had to sleep in a storage room in the back of a building. It was cold and uncomfortable, and the restroom was in a different part of the place, and it was basically outside, and that was... That was a couple of weeks, and then there was travel time on each side, and so that night, uh, about a week or so before Christmas, as I came around the corner and I saw the lights of my house, I was so excited. And I walked up the stairs, and I opened the door, and I felt the warmth of central heat. And I heard the squeal of my wife as she was surprised that I had gotten in a little earlier than she was expecting me. And it smelled like Christmas in there. And for the first time in weeks, I was at rest. I was home. Some of you have needed to find rest and home for longer than weeks. Some of you haven't found it in your whole life. Some of you have known it, but you're struggling now. You need a break. This is a world that'll make you want a break. Our culture is pulling apart right at the seams. We look at it and we are tempted to think it'll never be the same again. It'll never be good again. And we need a break. The church, the church of Jesus Christ makes us think we need a break. You you look all across the country and you've got Christians hollering at one another, saying ugly, mean things to one another. Like that's what the church is supposed to be. Then you come to your church And this pandemic is here and you feel guilty for hugging folks and you think, oh man, too many people are wearing masks or not enough people are wearing masks and nothing is the way I want it to be and it's never going to be the right way again. And I just want a break. And then you go home. Marriage isn't going the way you want it to go. Parenting isn't going the way you want it to go. Your health and the health of those you love isn't going the way you want it to go. Money's tight. You lost a job you're afraid you're going to. And you just need a break. Well, the good news of this passage of Scripture this morning is that Jesus, who said these words so many thousands of years ago, is here this morning by His Spirit to show you how to find home and find rest. I want this morning to agree with the words of Jesus and give you some instructions from Jesus Christ. If you are tired, if you're sick and weary of all of this, Jesus has rest for you. And I want to give you some instructions right from Jesus about how you can find it. If you're tired and weary, and you want to find the rest of home. Jesus tells you how to find it. But to find it, you've got to come as a child. You've got to come as a baby. Jesus says in verses 25 and 26, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you've hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for this was well-pleasing in your sight. This is a prayer of Jesus Christ. It is a prayer of praise to the Father. 
It's, it's a prayer of praise to God the Father for the way he has handled these things. He says in verse 25 that you've hidden these things. In verse 27, he talks about all things. Well, what are the things that Jesus is talking about? As, as Jesus praises the Father for the way he has handled all things, what's he talking about? Well, he's talking about everything he's been talking about. We're in Matthew chapter 11. For 11 chapters, Jesus has been talking about these things. Jesus begins his preaching ministry in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. And the very first word out of Jesus' mouth in his public ministry is repent. Repent. It's the first thing Jesus says. Repent. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's saying the kingdom of God has come. It wasn't here before, but now that Jesus is here, the kingdom is here. The kingdom is here, and Jesus is going to live a perfect life. He'll never sin like you and I do all the time. He's going to die on the cross to pay for sins, but not for his sins because he never committed them. He's going to die on the cross to pay for your sins because you commit them all the time, and for my sins because I commit them all the time. But he doesn't stay dead. He rises from the grave to demonstrate his victory and his power over sin. And the response on our part is to look to Jesus, to see that the kingdom have, has come in him, and we are to do what Jesus says we are to do, which is repent. We are to turn from ourselves and our way and our sin to Christ and his way and his righteousness. And we are to believe in him. When Jesus says, Father, these things, he's talking about that. He's talking about the way to be saved. And he says, those things are hidden from the wise and intelligent, and they are revealed to infants, to little tiny babies. Yes, Father, that's the way you want it to be. Why is God happy to show these things, salvation, to babies and to hide them from wise and intelligent people? The answer is because God is not going to allow you to be saved according to your pride. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, the Apostle Paul says, The word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. For it's written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. And the cleverness of the clever I will set aside. Jesus and Paul are not saying that you can't be saved if you are intelligent. They're saying you can't be saved by your intelligence. If you think you're smart enough to figure it out, you won't find Christ. If you think you are smart enough on your own to find the path to rest and home, you will never find it. You'll be lost forever. God blocks the path of the wise, intelligent folks because God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. It's what pleases the Lord. You understand how this works when you understand the difference between an adult and a little child. It's the difference of dependence. A child is dependent on their parents, and nobody needs to tell them. 
that they're dependent. They just are. They just know it. It's an instinct. I saw this one evening with my little girl. We were going to go on a daddy-daughter date, and I asked her where she wanted to go. She said she wanted to go get donuts and go to the park. My kind of girl. (laughs) So we go and get the donuts at Krispy Kreme, and we eat those. Then we go to the park, and we're running around and playing, and then she's running off on her own, and I'm just kind of watching her as she's playing on this thing over here. And as she's playing, this uh, herd of big, tough guys approach her, scary-looking dudes. Must have been seven or eight years old. And as they kind of horn their way onto the playground equipment, she kind of gets forced off. And I'm, I'm watching this, just trying to see how soon dad needs to intervene here. And she steps off, and she looks like she's going to come towards me, but then she turns around and starts talking to him. And I'm like, well, now what in the world is she saying to those boys? Well, so about that time, I start headed over that way to figure out what's going on here. I don't want her talking to these rejects. (laughs) Well, I get about halfway there, and she turns and starts running in my direction. She sees me, grabs my leg, and gets behind me. So I I pull her around, and I, I sit her on my leg, and I said, Honey, what's going on? She said, Those boys are mean. Well, I knew that already. She said, those boys are, I said, well, what were you, what were you talking to them about? And she said, I told them that if they weren't nice to me, my daddy was going to get a gun and shoot them. (laughs) Just like Jesus did to Goliath. That's what she said. I was like, okay, honey, let's, let's not talk to people about the Bible yet. (laughs) You're not ready for prime time, honey. And that's the point. While she was trying, look, I don't know who's watching or what shows up later. I never threatened to shoot anybody, and she didn't hear about Jesus shooting Goliath from me. That was, so just to be sure that's clear. But then that is the point. The point is that while she was fighting for herself, while she was defending herself, it wasn't working. Her situation only improved when she realized she is a little girl and she needs her daddy. And she ran to her dad. It is the issue of dependence. You can find home and you can find rest right now today. But you have got to humble yourself. You've got to act like a little child. And you have to run into the arms of your heavenly father. You can find home and rest, but you've got to come as a child. You can find home and rest, but you've got to come through Christ. Jesus says in verse 27, all things, there's that again, plan of salvation, repentance and faith, trust in all that Jesus is and what he's done, all those things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wills to reveal Him. Jesus is saying that there is an exclusive relationship between God the Father and God the Son. There's not another one like it anywhere. The Father is only known by the Son And the Son is only known by the Father. The only way you can know the Father is if you are the Son and if you are anybody that the Son chooses to reveal about the Father. It's an exclusive relationship. And this, I think... If you're in this room or if you're watching or you're listening 
and you think Christianity is an okay thing. You think the Bible is true. You think Jesus is a pretty good guy. You, th you, think, he's, you think he's great even. If you're in here and you think those things, the thing that is most likely to be keeping you from home and rest is this right here. For people who kind of think Christianity is basically a good thing, but they're not real Christians, I think most people it's because of this right here. They, they don't understand. Maybe you don't understand that Jesus is not just okay, and he's not just good, and he's better than great. He is the only way to the Father. There's no way to get to home and to rest, to get to heaven and Christ and peace and love. There is no way to have those things apart from the revelation of Jesus Christ. And we are so wrong about this in our flesh. We're so wrong about this in our worldly wisdom because we think we get to heaven and home and rest because of who we are instead of who Jesus is. I'd been a Christian for about a year and it really dawned on me that I know Jesus Christ because somebody told me about Jesus Christ. And so I have to tell other people about Jesus Christ. And so I made a commitment that I was going to tell my friends in my school about Jesus. So I started doing it. It didn't always go over very well. There was one friend of mine, and it just drove her nuts that I would say to her she was not going to go to heaven unless she had a relationship of trust and confidence in Jesus Christ. Drove her up a wall. I didn't realize how much it drove her up a wall until one night I was having dinner at her house and her mom was serving dinner and she said, you know what, you don't need to be telling my daughter that she's going to go to hell. Her grandfather was a preacher. So if anybody's going to heaven, she is. That's the argument. She's got a connection. She, she knows a guy. So she's going to heaven. What that woman said is the way to the father is by having a granddad who's a preacher. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus didn't say the way to the Father is by being at church every Sunday. Jesus didn't say the way to the Father is by getting baptized by a famous preacher. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus said the only way to get to the Father is by me. And so if you're here this morning and you want home and rest, you'll have to humble yourself. It won't be about you. And you'll have to find it through Jesus and through Jesus alone. If you want to find home and rest, you've got to come as a baby. If you want to find home and rest, you've got to come through Christ. And finally, if you want to find home and rest, you've got to come tired and weary. You got to come tired and weary. The only person who ever ultimately finds their home is the person who knows they haven't found it yet. So you got to look. The only person who ever ultimately finds a break is the person who knows they need one. 
So you've got to know about how tired you are and how weary you are before you'll even start looking for the break. The only hope of finding rest for the weary is to know and admit that you're weary. This is good news for you. Jesus does not invite you to find rest and home if you are smart enough to figure it out. Jesus does not invite you to find rest and home when you are possessed of your own strength. Do you hear the good news in this? The good news is you don't have to figure it out. The good news is you don't have to go, well, I've got this nasty set of sins over here, and I've got I to clean that up and polish that up, and then, then I'll go find rest. That's not what Jesus says. Jesus doesn't say you've got to figure out the answer to all the theological controversies. You've got to figure out in your own wisdom and in your own intelligence how all this works and how it all fits together, and then when you do that, you can come. That's not what Jesus says. Jesus says you don't have to be wise. Jesus says you don't have to be strong. In fact, he says more than that, you can't be wise and you can't be strong. You've got to humble yourself as a child. And when you see that you're tired and weary, that's what it takes. First Baptist Church isn't the church for everybody that's got it figured out. First Baptist Church is not the location for fixed people. First Baptist Church is a church for broken people. This, this is a church for people who have questions. This is a church for, for people who have sins. You got to know you're broken. You got to know you're tired. You got to feel the weight of your weariness. Jesus says in verse 28, Come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. There's the promise. And then he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart. And then here's, here's the fulfillment. You will find rest for your souls. If you're tired and weary, Jesus says, come and you'll get rest. That's the way it'll be. Rest comes when you trade your burden for Jesus. Rest comes when you take your worldly, sinful, legalistic yoke off your shoulders and you put Jesus' yoke on. Now, if you're listening and you don't understand what the yoke is I'm talking about, or if you're reading and you can't spell. This is not the little golden thing in the, uh, in the middle of an egg. This is uh, the yoke that is a harness that is placed around animals to keep them together to pull the plow. And the point here is you're going to have a burden. You're going to have a yoke. There's going to be weight on your shoulders. It's just a question of what it is. In the ancient world, Jesus was talking to Jews who viewed the law as a yoke, and they thought that was a good thing. They would celebrate wearing the yoke of the law and studying it and following it. But here was the real stinker. Anybody who really tried to do the law, and had spiritual eyes to see, knew they couldn't bear the weight of that yoke. And so Jesus is inviting you to take your worldly, self-important, sinful yoke off and put his on. And when you put his on, things are going to get better. You're going to carry a burden. You're going to have a yoke. Is the yoke going to be a heavy burden that you can't bear? Or is the yoke going to be the light burden of Christ? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I'm gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. How is Jesus' burden light? Jesus' burden is light because he's gentle and humble. Because he loves sinners. Because he loves broken people. Because he loves you. And Jesus' yoke is light. Because unlike 
heavy yokes which take you further and further and further away from rest, Jesus' yoke takes you home. This is the language of belief. When Jesus says, come, he's saying, believe. When Jesus says, take my yoke upon you, he's saying, trust me. And Jesus says what you got to do. He gives the invitation. He says, come. Come to me all who are weary and heavy laden. Nobody is blocking your way. Nobody is standing in front of you. First Baptist Church is here in 2020 to say this Sunday what we've been saying for 182 years. Come to Jesus, everybody who's weary and tired, and he will give you rest. Come right now. No one's stopping you. Jesus has thrown open the doors of heaven and home and peace and rest to anybody who will believe. There are people in this room, there are people watching and listening. You've never heard of this before. And you need to believe for the very first time. It's called getting saved. It's called becoming a Christian. When Jesus is saying, come to me, everybody. When Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. He's talking to you. And then there are people in this room and you're, you've repented of your sins and you've trusted Jesus and you're walking with Christ. But we love, we love to find replacement rests, even as Christians. And we sit there and we feel tired and worn out by everything that's happening in the culture. And we say, oh, give me the election. Let's sort this all out at the election. And then we take a break. But there's no rest over there. There's going to be another election after that one. Jesus says, come to me. Come to me. When you're tired and worn out about coronavirus and church and nothing ever the same again. Well, let's just get, let's just get to a vaccine and then it's going to be better. We'll be able to take a break. There's going to be another hassle after this. Jesus says, come to me. Come to me. If you're weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. If you're tired and worn out at home. I'll just sin. I'll bark at my wife. I'll bark at my husband. I'll bark at the kids. I'll bark at my parents. I'll sin sexually. There's no rest over there. If you think, well, I don't like my enemy. I don't like that guy. I'm going to burn his life down. I'm going to ruin his life. I'm going to take him out. Then I'll have a break. No break over there. No rest for that. Whatever you're looking for that's not Jesus won't lead to rest. Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. Believe in me, trust in me, take my yoke upon you. I want you to understand, this is not a sermon about heaven. This is not a teaching about heaven. Heaven comes later. Jesus offers you rest right now. Jesus, Jesus is here for you right now. He, he's not off waiting for you in the clouds in five years or 20 years or 100 years. Jesus is here by the powerful Holy Spirit right now. And just as he was 2,000 years ago, he's here right now with his arms stretched out for anybody for the first time or the hundredth time to receive you if you want rest. You can have it right now. In fact, our musicians are going to come out right now. And I want you to close your eyes.
And I want you to think about what is making you tired. I want you to think about all the ridiculous things you're doing to try to get a break. And I want you to think about Jesus. I want you to realize that if you will give up on all your false rests, if you will come as a child, if you will come through Christ, if you will come weary and tired, Jesus will receive you right at this very moment. Don't you want to break? I do. I want to rest. And Jesus will give it to you if you just do what he says and come. Why don't we sing this song as a prayer together as you stay seated? And let's just come to Jesus and rest.